Welcome back. It's standing by with more news now. Cristiano Ronaldo's latest move and other sports stories is Olumide Macaulay. Thank you for joining us in sports on the News at 10. A federal high court sitting in Joss has adjourned the case involving former Nigeria Football Federation President Aminu Megari and General Secretary Musa Madu to September the 25th since the court is on vacation. Justice Musa Courier, while adjourning the matter, advised counsel to apply to the Chief Justice of Nigeria for fiat in order to have the case heard during the vacation period or seek for the transfer of the case to Abuja. Since 2014, there's been a legal battle for the running of affairs for the NFF when Mr. Yahya Adama and Obina Ogba commenced the suit seeking declaratory and injunctive reliefs against Megari and Amadou, as well as the NFF Executive Committee, to the effect that the Congress and election held on August the 26, 2014, was the only valid election. Real Madrid have confirmed the departure of star striker Cristiano Ronaldo to Serie A champions Juventus after nine years. Reports say Juventus will play Real Madrid a transfer fee of $110 million for the 33-year-old Portuguese, which is the club's record signing. Ronaldo joined Real from Manchester United for £80 million in 2009 and scored a club record 451 goals and won the Ballon d'Or, awarded to the world's best footballer in 2008, 2013, in 2014, 2016 and 2017. He also helped them win the Champions League in four of the past five seasons, scoring in the 2014 and 2017 finals. And France will face England or Croatia in the World Cup final after edging past European neighbors Belgium 1-0 in the semi-final in St. Petersburg. Defender Samuel Mtiti scored the winning goal for the 1998 champions in the second half with a towering header from Antoine Griezmann's corner. The win delighted the current French president Emmanuel Macron and his predecessor Francois Hollande who were at the stadium to cheer the 1998 champions. President celebrates and France now can sniff the World Cup final. And away from football to tennis, Serena Williams survived a major scare before sealing her 11th Wimbledon semi-final appearance as the seven-time champion hit back to beat Italy's Camilla Giorgi, 3-6, 6-3, 6-4. The 23 Grand Slam winner was in danger of a stunning quarter-final exit after Giorgi became the first player in this year's tournament to take a set off the former world number one. But Serena forced her way out of trouble over the final two sets to stay on course for an eighth Old England club triumph. Meanwhile, Angelique Kerber has reached the Wimbledon semi-finals as well with a 6-3, 7-5 win over Russia's Daria Kasatina. Two-time grandstand winner Kerber, the highest-ranked seed left in the women's competition, dominated the first set as Kasatkina struggled with nerves. Kasatkina grew in confidence, but Kerber came through to win on her seventh match point. The German will now face Latvian Yelena Ostapenko after she ousted Dominika Chibokova, 7-5, 6-4. That's it on sports. Amarachi will be back with the rest of the news at 10 shortly.
Chairs applause, tears of relief and gratitude all characterised what people felt today in Thailand and around the world. That's because all 12 teenage footballers and their coach were rescued from the Tam Luang cave. This rescue is happening 17 days after the football team got trapped underground. The news that all 12 boys aged between 11 and 16 years and their 25-year-old coach have been rescued comes as a huge relief to millions in Thailand and around the world who have followed every step of this captivating story. The Wild Boars team had ventured into the Tham Luang Cave complex with their football coach after a training session on June the 23rd. It was dry when they climbed in, but a sudden deluge of rain poured flood waters into the cave, trapping them and forcing them to retreat farther into the system. And on Sunday, Thai authorities decided they had to act as fears mounted that the flooding would worsen under heavy rains. And so, a remarkable operation began to rescue the team. In three round trips, the boys were guided out by expert divers, navigating narrow and treacherous underwater passageways and pinpoints so narrow that oxygen tanks had to be removed from their backs. Four boys were brought out on Sunday, four on Monday, and the remaining four and their coach were rescued today. Japan is going through one of its worst crises in recent times as 155 people are said to have died in floods and landslides triggered by torrential rains west of the country. Two million people at least have been evacuated from the region after rivers burst their banks. Authorities have also opened up school halls and gymnasiums to those who have been displaced by the rainfall. More than 70,000 rescue workers, including the fire service and the army, are involved in the relief effort. The disaster is said to be the highest death toll caused by rainfall that Japan has seen in more than three decades. And the main news again. Nigeria's ruling All Progressives Congress today held a mega rally in Adwekiti ahead of Saturday's governorship election with President Mahmoud Buhari and other party leaders rallying support for the party's candidate, Dr. Kayode Fayemi. Also today, the House of Representatives endorsed the recommendation of the Joint Ad Hoc Committee of the National Assembly investigating the invasion of the Senate and recommending the prosecution and suspension of Senator Ovier Omagigi for 180 legislative sitting days. Thailand divers today rescued all 12 boys and their football coach from a flooded cave 17 days after they got trapped underground. That'll be all on the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.